Hi everyone, my name is Nick, and today I'm going to talk about some plants that I personally think need a little bit more love and attention. There are so many plants that are just so overly popular on Instagram, social media right now, and I just want to take a moment to step back and appreciate some of those that I just don't see on there that often, and I just think just aren't universally loved as much as they should be. So of course this video is 100% opinion, 100% bias, but um, yeah, I just wanna talk about some that I just see in my house that I just love and I appreciate so much and I just feel like I just don't see enough of it out there. So now's my moment to highlight them. So the first one we're gonna talk about is, let's talk about this one right here. Pardon me as I pull it up. This is a ficus repens, or sometimes they call this a ficus pamilla. I honestly don't even know what the exact name is. We're gonna call it ficus repens for this video. Uh, but this is the creeping fig. So this is just exactly in the same genus as your ever so popular, or once was so popular, ficus lyrata or fiddly fig. But this is a creeping and trailing version of ficus. And I have such a place in my heart for trailing plants. I just think they are such a vibe. And I really am, am in love personally with plants that look like I live in Philadelphia so kind of in the Northeast and I just really like that look of plants that look like I almost just went outside to like my courtyard and just dug it up with a trowel and brought it back inside and hung it up in my home I feel like this ficus has that look and I am all for that I just am obsessed with this just woodlandy appearance versus some of the tropical foliage that I have in my home so I'm a really big fan of that uh, this one for that reason almost alone um, it's not the easiest plant to care for it's not difficult by any means to care for ficus are just creatures of habit let's say where you can't forget about them you can't overwater them they will not react well they're more delicate per se like a fern versus um, not like a pothos or a snake plant which are much easier to care for you don't really have to think about them I do have to think about my ficus repens every now and again um, but I have this one hanging up in a western window and I water it at least once a week I do want the soil to stay moist not wet but moist um, but I have this one in a terracotta pot that is with a, a well draining mixture it's probably about um two part soil to one part perlite in here um, but i just am obsessed with this plant i love the way that the new growth comes in with kind of a rusty color so this plant I, I you know i always see it at the store um i don't have the easiest time selling it at the store where i work but i like to keep it in stock because i just think it's so phenomenal and it's something i really enjoy myself but yeah i just i don't see it that often or i don't see it on instagram that often um featured on people's pages and stuff like that okay that one was a kind of a chore to put down okay so the next one I want to talk about is let's talk about Asian violets or primalinas so you're probably pretty familiar with African violets they're a type of gesneriad which is um, a group of flowering house plants where they're known for their flowers at least many plants flower um, this one I think is a little bit more plain this is just the one that I have largest in my home that I wanted to share with you guys first because I really appreciate this one as I said it's, it's much more plainer than the next primalina I'm going to show you but um I love its muted blue foliage. It's got that kind of like glaucous hue to it and it's very fuzzy. Um, it's really good at catching cat hair. Uh, but these plants are so easy to grow. I always have them in stock. Um, one of my growers, Gary, who is known for in my area of the United States with these blue tags, um, he is famous for growing his primalinas and his Asian violets and I just am obsessed with them. They are so many varieties that he grows and they're all equally as beautiful this one as i said is kind of a more muted beauty because of that um you know it just doesn't have that kind of texture i keep talking about it so let me pull up this other one this one i didn't mention this is primalina hotai and i have this other one that i have in my home this is a primalina sinensis i'm pretty sure is what it is yeah sinensis so this is much fuzzier it's got a lot more um pattern to the leaves sorry that sound is probably horrible um it's got a lot more color and pattern to the leaves and it's got like this silver color like it shines in the light it's phenomenal they do bloom just like african violets bloom um but i would say that the foliage is the star of the show when it comes to primalinas so a really underrated houseplant. You don't want to get these leaves wet with cold water, but I typically water all of my houseplants with lukewarm or warm water in my home, so I don't have that issue just because there are quite a few gesneriads in my home and they are quite sensitive to cold water on the leaves. We'll typically get some kind of like brown, almost looks like sunburn damage to them if that is the case. And it's just that these super fuzzy leaves really just don't enjoy having that cold water. I don't understand the science behind it. I would love to hear in the comments. But just such a wonderful houseplant that um doesn't sell very well for me in the store if i will admit so moving on i have 
a really lovely Peperomia right here. This is a Peperomia Pereschii folia, and I just do not hear enough about this Peperomia. I think they call this, oh, I don't even know what they call it, like the zigzag Peperomia, I think is what they call it. Commonly, not that it's even like that common of a Peperomia, so you're not probably gonna hear a common name for a plant that's not even that common, but it's a very similar type Peperomia to the Peperomia tetragona or the Pudioleta, which is the stilt or parallel Peperomia. Oh my God, there are so many names for that plant. But it also gives me like that vibe of like Peperomia hope or like Peperomia quadrangularis, all of these super popular Peperomias. I feel like all of those characteristics are just tied together with this one beautiful Peperomia, which is Peperomia pereschii folia. And I am just such a huge fan of it. I have a couple of these around my home and I just don't think that uh, justice is served for these Peperomia Prescai folias. I think they're just so incredible. I did get one of mine from Steve's Leaves, which is, uh, he's known for carrying a large selection of Peperomias. So um, I do recommend checking him out if you are interested for that, but a really wonderful Peperomia. You just do not see it that often, but I think it's got, once again, similar to like that Primalina Hotai that I shared, uh, it's got some muted beauty, whereas uh, it's just, I mean, people might uh, just kind of pass over it when they're shopping in stores, if they do come along it, or if they're online shopping, it might just not be the Peperomia that stands out amongst the rest. But I think there are just so many things to love about this plant. Moving on. Oh, and I do want to say I actually have this planted in a, like a lamp, like part of a, a sconce lamp that I found at a thrift store and I just kind of have it sitting on this uh, Ikea cork tray and it kind of just completes the set and makes it look as if it's not planted inside of a lamp. So I have this right here is probably my favorite Aglianema. This is Aglianema Red Emerald. I see a bunch of different names for this on the market. I also see it as Garnet. There might be like differences in those plants, but they look dead on the same to me. But this is, <laughs> it's so beautiful. What I love about this Aglianema in particular is that each leaf is so different. Some leaves are a little bit more heavy with that red and yellow coloration to it, while some leaves are a little bit more lacking, and I really enjoy the way that the, the foliage looks. There's some kind of like whitish green that is amongst the red that I just think is so beautiful. and. I, I just personally feel like this is like the most beautiful ugly name. I'm sorry, I'm like brushing some of the moss from the display that I have it sitting in off of the leaves. But I just think this is like the most beautiful ugly name out there. I'm sure that many people have many different opinions on what the most beautiful ugly name is. But for me, Red Emerald takes the cake. And I have this one sitting usually right behind me underneath my Soltech Solutions light. And I don't know if you guys know where I'm sitting in my apartment, but I can probably almost see the edge if you can probably see a little bit of the television right here. So I'm usually on the couch, which is in front of me, and I'm facing this way, and I feel like sometimes my eyes just meander over from the television over to this Aglianema Red Emerald, and I'm just like, mm, it's just so beautiful. So this is a really, really easy Aglianema to care for. I've had some really good luck with it over the, I don't think I've had it for quite a year yet, but I've had it for almost a year, a full growing season, let's say. Um, and I don't water it very often. I'm probably watering it like other my, my other Aglianemas, like every 10 to 20 days, depending on where they are in my home and how much light they're receiving. Um, and they are in a, a mixture that's probably roughly two parts soil to one part perlite, which is my standard go-to all-purpose potting soil mixture. But it's so beautiful. A lot of these red Aglianemas, some people can find to be a little bit more difficult to grow in the home, but I have found this one to be a piece of cake and it's just an absolute stunner. It 100% stands out amongst the rest and it catches my eyes to this day. I, I love it so much. And I also have another looker right here that I don't hear talked about as often, or maybe it is, but I'm just unaware. Oh my God, I'm covered in moss now after I have the Aglianema sitting on a moss mat and <laughs> I think I'm gonna be thinking twice about that after filming this video, but it's usually sitting there. I might've mentioned in some of my other videos that my plants usually just sit in one spot and they don't move. And if I've had them for like a year plus or that one I haven't had for quite that long, but they just don't leave their spot unless I'm like pulling them out to repot them or something like that. So. Sometimes I learn new things about my plants when I pull them out to do my videos. Um, in this case, I learned that the moss, the moss might not be working out, but this is a Piper. 
I don't know if it's Piper Crocodum or Pi Piper Ornatum. One of those names is old. We're gonna call it Piper Crocodum for this video. But this is such a gorgeous plant. This has some really lovely pink uh, and green foliage on the front, and then the back side of the leaves has this beautiful wine red coloration to them, which is one of my favorite char characteristics about plants. And this has been a very easy growing Piper for me. Um, pipers are related to peppercorns and they're related to peperomias as well. So this is in the same family as the Peperomia paresciae folia I was talking about which I think is another reason to love it even more. But some pipers are just a little bit more difficult. I also grow the piper parmatum in my home, which is a more common piper, I'd say. And that one just needs to be in an enclosure to grow happily. But this one I've had happily growing outside of an enclosure, which is great because I get to really appreciate the beautiful foliage that this plant has to offer. You might notice on the back of these leaves that there's all these like water drops that, droplets it looks like these are actually sugar crystals that the plant is um, emitting and I have found that um, you know some of the thrips if they are present in my home at various times of the year they are present in my home um, they tend to really like these sugar crystals I guess or something along those lines because I will find the thrips on this plant but that's nothing that a quick spray of the Captain Jacks or insecticidal soap or a release of the green lace wings doesn't take care of very quickly so I just want to make note that I have had pest problems with these plants I'm not sure if it's related to those sugar crystals but my mind tends to think that it is but uh, I just want to make you guys aware of that but this is so beautiful I would say this is in the top five most beautiful plants that I have in my home and I have 450 plus house plants so that I feel like is saying a lot lot but it, it's just so beautiful I feel like I could just stare at this plant for hours and we need to have a good photo shoot soon because it's starting to put off some really nice new growth for me I have two new vines that are emerging so I really really love this plant and of course I paired it with one of my favorite Berg's pots because you guys know I'm obsessed if you follow me here on YouTube and I have one more plant to talk about today let me just brush a little bit more of this moss off this is a type of footed fern. I think footed ferns do not receive uh, the justice that they deserve, as I had kind of said for another part. Um, this one in particular is a Phlebodium arium, or the blue star fern, and I think I would argue that this is my favorite footed fern. I really like the color. Uh, it stands out, which is why I like to put it with this dark brick red pot, so the blue uh, foliage stands out. But this one is just so much easier than some other ferns I've grown in my home many, many years ago, or not many, many years ago, but like five or six years ago when I first started indoor gardening, I tried so many ferns because I love ferns. A lot of people love ferns and I love ferns and I just could not get them to grow. They just die and it's like you water them, but they just die and I just didn't understand what I was doing. And of course I was trying like Boston ferns and lemon button ferns, which are just... They're a little bit more finicky than uh, these footed ferns. So I have found solace in growing these footed ferns because they are just so much easier, so much more rewarding to grow. You can actually see right here are two new leaves that have just come in and you can see how beautiful this is. I just think when you find these plants in the plant store and they're in just like a four inch pot, I think they're a little underwhelming. Um, but once you get them growing pretty well, I think the foliage just comes in looking absolutely stunning. I think it's just so amazing how many sections these fern fronds have. It's, it's just so incredible. And not only that, but this one in particular, the blue star fern, I find can take some really good sunlight. So I actually do grow this one in a southern facing window. You can probably tell from like some of the burning look but burn looked leaves uh, leaves that looked burn or have sun damage on it like this one right here um but that doesn't really bother me the plant seems to really like where it is as long as i keep it well enough watered um but that's another thing too the footed ferns i find they can dry out a lot a lot more they dry out a lot how am i trying to say this they can dry out and handle it better than like the Boston ferns and the lemon button ferns could. They cannot handle drying out. This can handle getting bone dry. Does it want to be bone dry? Probably not, but it's not going to just shrivel up and die like a maiden hair fern would if you just forgot about it for a day too long. I also really enjoy rabbit's foot fern. I really like kangaroo paw fern. I think those are both wonderful footed ferns as well. There are a couple other types I grow in my home as well, but um, this is the one that I would say is just the winner for me when it comes to footed ferns. And I just, as I said, for all these plants, I just think they deserve a lot more love than they just, uh, receive and a lot more attention because these are some really wonderful houseplants. Most of these not all of them, but most of them are pretty common at your garden center. I would also really love to hear from you guys if there's any plants in particular that you think are not receiving the love or attention that they deserve as well. So I'd love to hear that in the comments. But thank you guys so much for joining me today. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at Philly Foliage, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys in my next video.
Have a great time.